As part of a cybersecurity awareness program, we'll be reviewing the common threats every employee faces on a regular basis. When you look at actual attacks ranging from small incidents to large-scale compromises, they all contain elements that a fundamental cybersecurity understanding might have prevented. In this portion, we'll address phishing. Phishing has been around for a while now, but it still proves to be very effective at compromising security. No, not that type of phishing. This type of phishing. Attackers realize that the easiest part of the security chain to break is often the employees. While at work, people are often too trusting and are distracted by the normal stress of doing their job. It takes time, but we all need to train ourselves to be more security conscious and aware at all times. Many good references can be found online describing the common features to be aware of when it comes to phishing. As seen by this US CERT reference, phishing attempts often contain typos, authoritative demands or threats, and instructions to follow a link or download an attachment to solve an issue. Most online resources will tell you to hover over the links and always pay attention to what you're clicking on. This is good advice, but pay attention to what exactly? Taking a quick look at how web addresses are structured can hopefully help you immediately identify fraudulent links. For our perspective, the top of this structure is referred to the, as the top level domain or TLD. This is a place where websites exist, and here are a few top-level domain examples. So looking a little closer, organizations such as DTIC, for example, have a domain that was within the .mil top-level domain. And then looking even closer, we find there are many subdomains at DTIC, such as www, IAC, or DOD grant awards, for example. Okay, but how does this help us to identify phishing again? The important part to notice that the organization immediately follows the top level domain from right to left. So IAC is found within DTIC and DTIC is found within .mil. Let's see some examples. We'll start with an easy one. Notice the website appears to be for Facebook, but the domain for this website is cut.us. Looking around more, notice the website is low quality, pieces are off center, and what exactly am I supposed to be doing at this website? The forms aren't even properly labeled, but at one point this was an active website attempting to steal login credentials. Here's a slightly less obvious phishing example. What gives it away? Take a look at the web address. Notice the site is a weebly.com address. Remember, the portion immediately to the left of the top level domain is where the web address is located. People often read the address starting with the Office 365 and are tricked into thinking it's legitimate. Closer inspection also reveals a typo in the username field. Now for a little test. You're going to be shown two different websites. Can you identify the fraudulent website? First, here's a login website for accessing an iCloud account. See anything unusual? Is it legit? Well, what about the website for accessing a Yahoo account? Anything off about this one? Which one do you think is fake? If you said iCloud, you were right. If you said Yahoo, you were also right. Both are fake websites scamming users into giving up their credentials. As soon as you take the time to inspect the URL, most people can easily identify the web address that does not look official. But again, it takes a constant awareness to train your eyes and notice the web addresses as you are surfing the internet. Here's one last website example to check out. Notice that regardless of how official the website might look, finding the top level domain and understanding the subdomain structure is one of the primary ways to identifying phishing and protect your credentials. In the next few examples, we'll take a look at some phishing emails that try to trick us into visiting fraudulent websites or distribute malware via attachments. The standard phishing email is often vague and asks you to click on a link and solve a problem. Although the email starts off sounding legitimate, read the paragraph that starts with security advice. Not only is the colon off, but always log off completely your internet banking account after using internet banking from a public place or computer for security. Re yeah, that is just not a legitimate sounding message. And there's no way a bank would send this as an official email. This phishing email takes a slightly different approach and prompts the user with a security message. It informs of how the account has been accessed recently and tries to trick the user into believing someone else did it. 
This style of phishing email is very successful when it immediately follows a large public data breach and users are more likely to believe that there was unauthorized access on their account. Another way users fall for phishing emails is by getting lured into links or attachments by the promise of money or raunchy celebrity pictures. Any email containing an attachment requires a bit of common sense and security awareness to avoid the threats. And speaking of attachments, one of the most common tricks by attackers is having the file name end in PDF or DOC when it really is a .zip or .exe. Keeping a close eye on attachments is a must for maintaining computer security. So to summarize, here's a few tips to keep in mind as you go about your workday. Phishing emails are often demanding you to take action. Try to distinguish whether the request seems legitimate. Be cautious of all links in emails, especially if they contain attachments. Many successful phishing attacks were sent from a compromised, trusted account. However, just because it has links does not make it malicious. So to err on the side of caution, use a trusted search engine to find the legitimate resource instead of following the suspected links. Also, try to find the top-level domain and identify the structure of the web address. Fraudulent websites will not be of the official domain. Phishing attempts are more serious than spam. Spam should be flagged, deleted, and you should go about your workday. With phishing, you should report it whenever you receive a phishing email. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, don't feel bad about being unsure. It is a combination of pride and shame that cause problems with security. We are either overconfident and think it won't happen to us, or we are too scared to report that we had a problem. Both are bad approaches to security. We must learn from each other's experience, and awareness is key.